Ole! Hello, people of YouTube. Hello, people. Hello, people, 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 people. It's me. Right, hello, I'm back. And today I'm going to talk about something that I've always had to deal with and overcome, slash, yeah, I don't know. But, and that is, I have dyslexia. And something that everyone has heard of, Erlins. I'm pretty sure most people watching this probably would have heard of dyslexia. And you know what? Even though I have it, I'm not entirely sure how it, like, what it is. Like, I know how it affects me. But I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why. I know that it, my mind works slightly differently. And the best way I can describe it, although it's been described to me, sometimes it's a bit like your mind's full of filing cabinets and it's like trying to find the right filing cabinet in the dark. Doesn't make a lot of sense. But another way it describes me that actually, another way it has been described to me that it makes more sense. When I got tested for dyslexia, they, t they don't just test reading and people, you know, because I mean, reading's not natural and dyslexia is a natural occurrence, it happens. So it obviously can't just affect reading. But you have like, say you have all your skill sets that you're good at, and you'll get tested on all of them. So you have reading, writing, like your ability to solve puzzles, listening, just all your skill sets. And normally most people, if you draw like a line down it of how good they are, it'd be like a small wibbly wobbly line of their skill set. Like some they're good bit bad, they're good and bad kind of thing, but with dyslexia, that if you draw a line down it, it'll be like this. So, so you'll be really good at some things and absolutely rubbish at the other thing. Yeah, and also Erlings, some of you may click to on this because of Erlings, but there's not a lot of videos explaining it. I'm not an expert, but I have Erlings, and for those of you who don't know what Erlings is, ouch. When you have anyone is at school, if you are at school, have you seen anyone with like coloured paper or like a plastic film they put over the paper or even coloured glasses? That's Erlins. I have Erlins and mine are dark green. These are my glasses. And I'm not sure if it's good or bad. In the summer, no one will ever notice. But the thing is, in the winter, these are quite dark. So the one question I get asked a lot is Why are you wearing glasses in the winter? You hung over. You know, I'm not going to lie, I have worn sunglasses in the past when I'm hungover, so <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. But yeah, so, Erlend. A lot of people to begin with have paper, like coloured paper, they can be any colour. And basically what Erlend's is, and the reason why they have paper is, Erlend's is to do with the signal from your eye to your brain. So, light, the way we see light is a bit like music, light travels in waves. Music travels and sound waves, okay? So, we, our eyes and brain, they can pick up the sound, the, the rays of light. So you've got like red, green, all the different coloured rays, but people with Erlins, we see some of the colours more strongly than others. So, a normal person would see all the colours at exactly the same level. So, see reds, greens, they'd all see them at exactly the same. But we see some colours stronger than others. So like our brain, the signal for like red, for example, might come in, there's red there, might come in really strong and blue might come in really weak. Now that doesn't mean that we're colourblind. We still see colours the same. But what it means is that our brain is having to work overtime to work those kind of colours and whatnot and put them back into line. So... It means that there's blood flowing to parts of our brain that shouldn't normally be flowing to, which means that we can get headaches and all sorts. Also, a fun fact, I think it's 50% of people who have dyslexia also have Erlins. Well, it's the other way around, like 50% of people who have Erlins have dyslexia, just to let you know. So if you've got one or the other, get tested for the other one. So yeah, so it means there's blood flowing to brains that shouldn't be, which means you get headaches more and stuff like that. But it means also my brain's a little bit more active than most people's. So what you may be asking is, well, what do the glasses do? The glasses, they'll be different colours. So say, I don't actually quite know what colour I see more. 
but I'm guessing it's whatever colour is opposite to green in the colour spectrum. So what it does is the, the coloured lenses filter out the colours that I see too much of or can add colours that I see, don't see enough of. Therefore, reducing the amount of work my brain has to do. So if you're like at school and you have to wear that, do you, and you have to write on coloured paper and stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. It just means you're, you think differently, you do things differently, which isn't a bad thing at all. It's good. It's good. You don't want to be normal. <laughs> But I, if you have the papers and stuff, they're really good and they do help. But what I would say and suggest is get glasses as soon as you can. I mean, I've had these for years because, well, as for my previous video, I haven't got a job at the moment. But there is light at the end of the tunnel in that one. I might say it another video if I get the job. But it's quite expensive, especially well, in England. So I'm not sure what it's like in America, but in England it's quite expensive. So you get your normal prescription glasses if you need them. When I did it, it was a lot of money, but I think it's going down a bit. But I think it was like something like a hundred pound to get tested, and then another hundred pound to like get the filters put on these glasses. Because there's nowhere in England where you can get the filters put on your glasses, so they kind of dip it in the solution and turn it into whatever colour your filter is. So they have to send it to America, and the NHS won't recognise it. Well, they recognise Erlen's as a syndrome, but they won't treat it because it costs too much. Yeah, but I'd recommend getting these as soon as you can, and they do last a while, because this is better than the papers and stuff, because if you think about it, you're reading that bit of paper, and that is whatever colour, say for me it's green, I think I've still got some green paper somewhere. Yeah, I've got some green paper here. My school was quite good with it, they, they gave me green paper, this is maths paper, but yeah, they gave me green paper, I didn't ever have the overlays that go over top, but it helps, but it's not the best. Because if you think about it, you're looking at this paper that's on your desk, and you've got all this space here where all normal light's coming in. Now, if you think of, like, normal light, it's kind of white because it's got all the colour spectrums in it. So try and get glasses as soon as, and it helps a heck of a lot. And I'm not wearing them in my videos because people are like, why are you wearing sunglasses? So, <laughs> yeah, that's that. I think another thing I was going to talk about is because of Erlen's and my dyslexia, I don't like to talk about it too much because I don't like it to be an excuse. Like, I do try an awful lot and I've been trying recently to try and read more books and stuff, but because I find it hard to take information in that way, like I'll have to read things like, three times before I can make sense of it. And when I'm reading it, like I'll keep I'll read the same line a couple of times. Like it might look like the whole page is swirling around separate words. Or I can see rivers in between the spaces and the gaps. So it can become become so it can become quite hard to read a book. So one thing I've got into a lot is audiobooks and I think they're really cool. And I'm not gonna lie, I've I've got I think I might have mentioned this in another video before, but I've really got into like making them. It's a lot of effort for me because I've got to read the book quite a few times, but making them. But the only problem is with making them is I can't put them on YouTube because of copyright, I think. And it's very vague. And I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. If you have dyslexia and stuff, try and use like audiobooks and stuff. That's what I would, the best thing for me is audiobooks. And I don't have Audible, I can't afford it. But use YouTube. I mean, it's going to be really rubbishy because it'll be like that kind of Stephen Hawking voice reading it out to you. But hey ho, if you can get over that, then I would say do that. And one thing I got with my dyslexia and others that I find is spelling. And while at uni, I was given this really cool program called Dragon, where you have to wear like a headset as if you're working for a cool company. And you speak into it and it will type exactly what you're saying. But I don't use that a lot because it's, it takes a lot to open the program and get it all set up. So at the moment... I use my phone. I just dictate into my phone. If I'm if I'm not sure on a word, I'll press a button and I'll talk it into it. It works really well. And yeah, you know, another program I use is Read Write Gold. And what that is, is it um, you can like you have a paragraph or anything on your computer, and you highlight it, and it will read it back to you. Or 
I can take a picture of a page and I can do a screen and screen grab of it and it will turn that page into a Word document, meaning I can read anything out loud to me. So it's really good when I was doing my dissertation, I would turn on Read Write Gold and I'd listen to my dissertation back to me because the one problem is with like islands and stuff, you skip the the small words like the ands and the the and the you know all the connecting words and whatnot and I'm also really bad at punctuation but when you read your own work back to you you still skip out the words that you miss because your brain's just filling it in like your brain knows what you wanted to read you right <laughs> also sometimes if I'm having a conversation with someone at the same time I'm doing my work sometimes I'll start typing up the conversation rather than what I want to actually type <laughs> I think it's quite weird how I mean, I was going to redo this video and I still might because I think I need to read up a bit more on dyslexia myself because I don't quite know how dyslexia affects the brain. I know how Erlen's works, but I'm not overly too sure on dyslexia. I don't think a lot of people are. They know that it makes it harder for people to read and concentrate for longer times and they're more like image based stuff, which still perplexes me because Writing isn't a natural thing, but dyslexia is a natural occurrence. So what else does it affect? It obviously affects other things, but I'm not too sure on that. So I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, so I, I find doing a lot of more visual stuff, if I have to do like, oh, it's quite sunny. If I have to do like writing-based stuff, I try and use visual stuff as much as I can. Like, I suppose this almost in a way is a, is a diary of just how I feel when I need to talk about things because this is a hell of a lot easier than me writing it down and also I still really think that even though it's got a lot better I still think like the English education system can like deal with dyslexia and earnings a lot like a lot of people still don't believe it like oh it's all just in your head well yeah of course it is <laughs> but yeah I got tested for dyslexia when I went to university. When I went to university, they did it free. And that's if you're thinking of going to university and you think you might struggle because you feel you might have dyslexia. If you haven't been tested, they'll test you for free. If you have been tested for, then that's good. You go to their disability department and you say, "Look, I've got dyslexia. Here's my stuff," and you can get help for it. They'll give you fifty percent extra time on exams. They'll like. Me, I got a laptop and loads of programs to help me with my dyslexia and stuff. And you get allowance for spelling for for writing, and it really it it levels the playing field for people with dyslexia because the marking criteria is still gear, geared around how well you are at writing, so it levels it a bit better. So yeah, that's kind of my experience with dyslexia. Oh. And the one thing I'm really struggling at the moment is applying for a lot of jobs. They like you to take an English test online before they even meet you. Yeah, and I struggle on that a lot. So that really tees me up sometimes. But yeah, I forgot on one of my videos recently to do a joke. And I'm going to do uh, a joke because I always do. Here's a joke. Ready? Sit down. It's hilarious. A drunk dyslexic walked into a bra. All right, and that's about it. Um, see you later. Go away, it's finished. Go away. Click the like.